Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay. I've just got back from the Central Ohio Bushcraft Gathering and it was a great time. It was a real good event. Somewhere between 150 and 200 people there. Camping in the woods. Me and a bunch of people were camping together. Uh, I think we had like a dozen one win hammocks right there in a group. Somebody got to call it the one win woodsman camp. I heard somebody say one. But um, it was a really good time. And this coming Monday, I will put up a few little short snippets and do a more detailed version of it. But I just want to let you know I'm back in town. It's one of the reasons I, have, I haven't been answering my uh, questions on my Facebook and my questions on my videos on my channel is because I wasn't in town. But I'm back now and we'll get going. Uh, recently, I posted a video talking about a little table that I'd got to replace my little stool top that goes onto a small footstool. And I had quite a few people ask me to give more detail on that. They'd like to make one. So for today, as a do-it-yourself project, we will be talking about that. This came about for me because of living history, doing rendezvousing. You want to carry the minimum amount of gear you can to be comfortable to camp out for a week, okay? So these stools served a m many functions. One, it was a handy place to sit down when you were by the fire, cooking by the fire. It was easy to move, nothing cumbersome. It was also a great place to put your legs. Whenever you're sitting in your chair, put your feet up to the fire, take your feet off, or your shoes off, and put your feet up to the fire to warm up at night. It was also a handy place to come inside the tent or whatever and open it up and have a place to put your clothes and things to keep them up off the ground. Or if you're getting flooding conditions, it was someplace I could put camp boxes and stuff up on to elevate it if the ground's becoming flooded. And that did happen more than once. So it was a multi-use item. And that's the reason mine is so... It's got a lot of miles on it. But I'm going to repair this one and I'm going to show you how I repair it a little bit later. It's relatively a simple repair. But uh, this 70s professor, and he has a channel on uh, YouTube, he does a lot of uh, Boy Scout cooking, that type skill stuff. And I followed him for many years. And after I had done that, he wanted to try to make a stew. And he said he hadn't thought of it. So he went and opened up a stew and put a piece of plywood on it. So for that and several other people who have asked, let me give you some details. Okay. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need a tape measure and you're going to need to figure out how wide is the top of your stool, okay? How big from here to here on the outside edge. Give yourself a, a little bit of room. So if it's exactly 12 inches, give yourself 12, eight, 12 inches and an eighth, okay? It's going to be, that's going to be important a little bit. That gives you the first thing. Now this particular stool is 14 inches. So I would make the opening I'm trying to make 14 and an eighth or 14 and a quarter, okay? The next measurement is this way. You want to know how big it is this way across, okay? And the easiest thing to do is like this. These are square. So this outer point on either side measure from those two points. And so from outer point to outer point on this, is 12 and a half. Now again, I want to make it a little bit big so it doesn't stick to the stool. I want it to be easily picked on and off, but at the same time, I don't want it to have a lot of slop to it, okay? So the top fits on there, and if you notice, it's actually a little bit of a rectangle. It's not a true square. So it fits one way, and it'll fit the other if you make it. I made mine where it is elongated a little bit and it gives me about almost an inch clearance because I had two other stools that were slightly bigger and I wanted these to fit any component. Now this particular one, and several of you asked about it, is made up out of boredom, okay? It has four pieces that form the frame and then the actual component is a one by four that was run through a bandsaw to make it quarter inch thick strips. Okay, this is a fancy one, so to speak. Now this one is not load bearing. 
This one was made, and all of these tops were made out of scrap, guys. It's where I had the component laying around, and I decided rather than throw it away to make something out of it. So this was about a three foot or so piece of 18 inch wide one before. So I took it on a bandsaw and I cut it in fine thin strips and then I got it up there and took a brad gun and went along and nailed it in place to hold it. Lightweight tray. Now why would I want slits in this? Drains water, it won't hold water. And a lot of times these were left out in the rain because we simply didn't have room in the tent if we were camping together, whatever. So, you know, things got left out. These also, another purpose for these tops is, like I was saying, on wet ground, they could be put down to sit gear on top of to get them up off the ground. Flipped over like this, it's a tray. So I had something to carry stuff back and forth from the fire. All my components for cooking, I could take out there and set it out there like that and be able to take it out. And this edge kept stuff from sliding off. You know, I could pick it up. Okay. Now, you can also, if you don't want to do it for these little stools, made a top for a milk crate. Same idea. Now this one is load bearing. And what I mean by that is I can stand on it. Okay? And I made it snug. I made it almost exactly the right size so I can pick up and the whole thing comes with it. I have to push it and bump it to get it off of there. And that way it can be used as a storage box as well. Now this one is two by two cut to the size and then a piece of quarter inch um, indoor outdoor plywood nailed to the top so it's a solid piece again it serves as a tray but I can set this down and this would serve when I'm doing and we will when we're doing the redneck camper here very shortly I'll be showing how I make an outside shower on the outside of my redneck camper and one of these becomes the floor. And what that means is I'm going to take a shower. I lay this down on the ground. I'm inside of a tarp enclosure. I've got my shower set up. And I can step up on this barefooted and take a shower. And I'll be standing in the mud and getting my feet all muddy. See? This was something I could sit on. And I could just simply sit it out in the sun. It'll dry. Quick and easy. But this is heavy duty load bearing. By taking the milk crate and making it where it locks onto it, now it's a lid that I can actually pick an empty one up. I can still reach the handles of the milk crate, and I've got I've turned it into an, a closed storage unit that can be stacked. That can also be used as a footstool, as a sitting on, as a whatever in camp. So milk crates can also be with that. So let me give you some measurements. Okay for a milk crate okay the top on this is cut to 15 and 3 quarter inches by 15 and 3 quarter inches the two by twos are one straight piece one straight piece and then the two pieces of the filler in, bes in beside okay so these will be 15 and 3 quarters, the two long side pieces, and then the piece between that goes between them is 13 and an eighth. Okay, I say again, 13 inches and 1 eighth. For you that are not very skilled or don't have a lot of experience in doing the woodwork, you cut the top to the size that I said. Okay which was 15, yeah, 15 and 3 quarters square. Then you cut the two 2 by 2s and put them on the edge and anchor them. Go ahead and glue them in place, nail them down. Then cut the two pieces to go in between. That way you can't get it out of, you know, can't get it wrong. Just measure it so it slides in. And then there's a drilled a hole and a nail went in to nail the two pieces in. Really, that ain't necessary because I nailed it around the top edge. In fact, I used roofing nails. I had them laying around, and it was handy. And then I painted the whole thing with outside paint to secure it. So for the lid for a milk crate, which will also work for the little stools, it's going to be 15 and 3 quarters 
and then the internal runners are going to be 13 and an eighth, okay? That produces an opening in here that's snug on a milk crate. Like I said, you gotta put it up there and kinda of bump it with your hand to make it go down. Now, on the stool, Okay, on the stool, the stool head, this particular one is 16 and 3 eighths by 16 and a quarter. Remember I said it's a, actually a slight rectangle. This has enough room internally for it to fit into. So I think I've showed you the basic idea how to create these tops and they just fit over nice and easy it is a multi-use item these have come in so handy so many times guys um, when we were doing rendezvousing and we were putting on the southeastern rendezvous from about 1990 to 2000 we were either putting it the event on, which I think we put on four, and the rest we were working at those events as the dog soldiers. So we were camping out a week, 10 days, a week or 10 days. And you have to make yourself comfortable in that long term because we're with family, we're wives, and everything else. This was bulk. This wasn't no ultralight backpacking. And so this was a little, little trick we learned that paid so many dividends. It was a tray at mealtime where you could carry stuff from the fire, especially when multiple people are cooking. Being able to stack up multiple things and carry. I could set a red hot Dutch oven on this thing and carry it, you know, and set it up on a table. Another thing is as a spacer to put onto a table that couldn't get heat on it. So I'm gonna put a hot Dutch oven up on top of a plastic table, this one under it. This was the spacer to set the Dutch oven on. Them legs may leave a little mark on this, but they ain't gonna melt into a plastic table or a table that's got some sort of cover on it that may catch fire. This, you could put a red hot pot up there and be okay. These were used as a cutting board. Just sit here in your lap, put a piece of aluminum foil across the top of it, like I've talked about, and sit here and cut up vegetables, especially if you flip it around to the, to the tray side and put the aluminum foil in here. I could sit here and cut up vegetables and not have to worry about them rolling off. And yeah, I could easily gather it up to hand off to the person cooking or roll up the aluminum foil to pre-prepare before meal time. See what I'm saying? These were so useful. These were great as the shower base to be able to have something to stand up in. I think I've got like eight of these of various people and every bit of this was made of scrap, guys. Every bit. This one I was just showing off. I could have made one. This is very light but you can't stand on it, but it works fine as a tabletop. So, in conclusion, I hope this gives you the dimensions you're looking for. If you want to do this as a do-it-yourself project, please do. I mean, it's something that's very easily done, even with people with very minimum woodworking ability. You could take apart a pallet and utilize that wood to make this. Shipping crates can become this whatever wood you find beside the road that somebody's throwing away could be recycled into this it can go on to milk crates it can go on to stools it can go on to whatever device you got that you want a lid for you know put it up there you know line it up give it a bump and there it is a rock solid and that's a table that's a stool that's a step to get up and down out of the camper whatever they're just very useful Please leave your uh, questions and comments down below, guys. And if there's anything else you'd like me to go more in depth to, please let me know. I'll be happy to do it. And if you've enjoyed this video, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button before you go. I'd really appreciate it. Till next time, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.